Today we will read chapter 19 because Jayananda Maharaj last time he actually was asking if in this chapter there is also Manjri Bhav available. So we will see together. So put your eyes and your feelings into it. And then let us see if there is Manjri Bhav available here. It is called the inconceivable behavior of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I will read the summary so that we know what is the theme. The following summary of chapter 19 is given by Srila Bhakti Vinodakur in his Amrita Pravahabhasya. Every day, no, every year, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Jagat Ananda Pandit to visit his mother in Navadvip with gifts of cloth and prasad. After one such visit, Jagat Ananda Pandit returned to Puri with a sonnet that Advaita Acharya had written. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu read it, his ecstasy was so great that all the devotees feared that the Lord would very soon pass away. The Lord's condition was so serious that at night he would bruise and bloody his face by rubbing it against the walls. To stop this, Swarup Damoda asked Shankara Pandit to stay at night in the same room with the Lord. This chapter further describes how Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the Jagannath Vallabha garden during the full moon night of Vaishaka, April to May, and experienced various transcendental ecstasies. Overwhelmed with ecstatic love, at suddenly seeing Lord Sri Krishna beneath an Ashoka tree, he exhibited various symptoms of spiritual madness. So that was the summary. Now we begin to read. And if someone from you is inspired, please, whenever you feel the inspiration, just uh, share your feelings and we can have a little break for that and then go on with the text. Text 1. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most exalted of all devotees, of mothers, spoke like a madman and rubbed his face against the walls, overwhelmed by emotions of ecstatic love. He would sometimes enter the Jagannath Vallabha garden to perform his pastimes. I offer my respectful obeisances to him. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 
Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 3. E Mata Mahaprabhu Krishna Prima Veshe Un Mada Pralapakare Ratri Divase. In the ecstasy of love of Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus behaved like a madman, talking insanely all day and night. So we can see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually is a very uh, a not so easy understandable person for us jivas. Sometimes he is in this mood, sometimes he is in that mood, so we have to see what mood actually he is in now and what actually we should learn from that or understand or feel from that. Above it said that he is the most exalted devotee in, mother, in love for mother, most exalted of all devotees of mothers. Why? Because he's behaving like that to his mother. He stays where she said he should stay although he took sannyas. That's one emotion, but there are other, others' emotion. Now it is said, in the ecstasy of love of Krishna, not love for Krishna, love of Krishna. So that's another mood. So we have to see through what kind of mood he's going. Verse 4, text 4. Jagadananda Pandit was a very dear devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord derived great pleasure from his activities. Knowing his mother to be greatly afflicted by separation, the Lord would send Jagadananda Pandit to Navadvip every year to console her. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Jagat Ananda Pandit, Go to Nadia and offer my obeisances to my mother. Touch her lotus feet in my name. Tell her for me. Please remember that I come every day and offer my respects to your lotus feet. Any day you desire to feed me, I certainly come and accept what you offer. I have given up service to you and have accepted the vow of sannyas. I have thus become mad and have destroyed the principles of religion. <clears throat> Mother, please do not take this as an offense, for I your son, am completely dependent upon you. I am staying here at Nila Achal, Jagannath Puri, according to your order. 
as long as I live, I shall not leave this place. Following the order of Paramananda Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent his mother the prasad, clothing, left over, uh, left by Lord Jagannath. After his pastimes as a coward boy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very carefully brought first class prasad from Lord Jagannath and sent it in separate packages to his mother and the devotees at Nadia. So we can see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sending the prasad in the mood of the people who will actually eat it. It's also an interesting point. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the topmost gem of all devotees of mothers. He rendered service to his mother even after he had accepted the vow of sannyas. Jagadananda Pandit thus returned to Nadia, and when he met Sachimata, he conveyed to her all the Lord's salutations. He then met all the other devotees headed by Advaita Acharya and gave them the prasad of Jagannath. After staying for one month, he took permission from Mother Sachi to leave. When he went to Advaita Acharya and also asked, asked his permission to return, Advaita Prabhu gave him a message to deliver to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now there comes a very interesting point. Advaita Acharya had written a sonnet in equivocal language with an import that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand, but others could not. In his sonnet, Advaita Prabhu first offered his obeisances hundreds and thousands of times unto the lotus feet of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He then submitted the following statement at his lotus feet. I just remember when Gurudev was speaking about Panjatattva and he was actually explaining he often said that now even Advaita Prabhu is standing like this in front and, pre and, and, and praying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? Because he is Radha. He has the mood of Radha. And this is very, very unique. And that's why it is said here hundreds and thousands of times he is bringing his obeisances again and again because this is a very, very rare situation that the Lord is coming in that mood. Actually, outside Radharani, inside Radharani, and in between Krishna. And we will see that this change of mood will happen again. So text 20. Please inform Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is acting like a madman, that everyone here has become mad like him. Inform him also 
that in the marketplace rice is no longer in demand. So now we have to try to get some idea what actually is the meaning of this. It is said no one can understand except Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's also said by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami that actually only a person like Advaita Prabhu can understand such things or such messages. So inform him also that the marketplace uh, on the marketplace rice is no longer in demand. Let's see what text 22 is written in. Those now mad in ecstatic love are no longer interested in the material world. Tell Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Advaita Prabhu, who, who has also become a madman in ecstatic love, has spoken these words. So I am not on the platform to understand what is written here, but my feelings are giving me some idea if we look from, from our uh, from our angle on it. So if we are servants from Radha, then we understand actually that Radharani is the main prominent mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we heard now in the last chapter, or let's begin in the even once, one chapter before, the turtle was in Radharani's mood. Then it came up with the jumping in the sea. Manjari Bhav, looking at the Lila. So what could be more up than that, actually? Because if we think that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually starting from the lowest point, like knowledge, first he had defeated all the great uh, persons who had uh, spiritual knowledge in India, and when he was the greatest pundit, he just dropped all this knowledge and said, so now I will chant Hare Krishna, and every the whole world was looking at him, what he is doing now, why he is doing it. So he was the perfect teacher for the whole world, that Kyan is not the way. And so this was the beginning, and he is actually showing us the way, and it goes more and more up, step by step. So what could be the step now? After Manjuri Bhav, he was actually looking in Manjuri Bhav and seeing the Lila. What could be more? We will see. So actually here, he is getting a letter from Advaita Acharya, who actually called him, right? He was the one who called him to come in his world and give his mercy by offering water and to lasse leaves. So now he is writing something like nobody can understand, completely mad. So how could we understand that? I'm not saying that this is 
the ultimate truth. I just want to try to feel and share my feelings with you. And you please also share your feelings. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gets this Please inform Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is acting himself like a madman, that everyone here has become mad like him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radharani and Mandrepa, so he is mad. And all others have become mad like him. What does it mean? They are adopting this mood. So they are also completely mad. And what does it mean that on the marketplace rice is no longer in demand? We know in Fire Yakya we are offering rice, like with Swaha, and there's a Fire Yakya, we offer rice. But this is actually a Yakya where you want something back, right? So this means actually we are um, doing yakya for Vishnu or for Krishna. So it has also connection with Krishna. But I don't want to go now more on these details. I just want to give an, a, a feeling, a general feeling. So please just try to understand. Rise is connected with God or with Krishna, no longer in demand. What could it mean? Krishna is not needed now. You can go com completely fully in the mood of Radha. For example, just, you know, I don't want to say this is the, the meaning. It could be. Like, now, no need for God consciousness anymore because they got the taste of higher consciousness, of your ecstatic madness, of your love. Those now mad in ecstatic love are no longer interested in the material world. This is the next text. Tell Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Advaita Prabhu has also become a madman. In ecstatic love, has spoken these words. So that means, or could mean, that they are adopting Manjari Bhav. But let's see if this could be right. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Because this would explain what is higher than to enjoy yourself, Manjari Bhav. What is higher? To give to others and let them enjoy Manjari Bhav would be higher. So when he heard Advaita Acharya's statement, Jagadananda Pandit began to laugh. And when he returned to Jagannath Puri Nilachal, he informed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of everything. After hearing the equivocal sonnet by Advaita Acharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quietly smiled. That is his order. He said, then he fell silent. Although he know, uh, although he knew the secret, Swarup Damodar Goswami inquired from the Lord, what is the meaning of this sonnet? I could not understand it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Advaita Acharya is a great worshipper of the Lord and is very expert 
in the regulative principles enjoined in the Vedic literatures. Advaita Acharya invites the Lord to come and be worshipped and to perform the worship he keeps the deity for some time. After the worship is completed, he sends the deity somewhere else. I do not know the meaning of this sonnet, nor do I know what is in Advaita Prabhu's mind. Advaita Acharya is a great mystic. No one can understand him. He is expert in writing sonnets that even I myself cannot understand. Hearing this, all the devotees were astonished, especially Swarup Damuda, who became somewhat morose. If we look from the angle, Swarup Damoda, who is Swarup Damoda? In the Krishna Lila. And why he becomes a little bit morose? Could it mean that Krishna is leaving now and Radharani is taking over the scene? Krishna is already going back. Maybe you can help me. From that day on, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's emotional state changed markedly. His feelings of separation from Krishna doubled in intensity. Maybe this could be a hint. From that day on, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's emotional state changed markedly. His feelings of separation from Krishna doubled in intensity. His feelings of separation in, ex in ecstasy of Srimati Radharani increased at every moment. The Lord's activities, both day and night, were now wild, insane performances. Suddenly, there awoke within Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the scene of Lord Krishna's departure to Mathura. And he began exhibiting the symptom of ecstatic madness known as Udgurna. So if we see this, we could imagine that Krishna was leaving and Radharani is going mad now. And that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood. And seeing Krishna's departure to Mathura, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke like a madman holding Ramananda Roy by the neck. So
So what does it mean? Radharani is holding whom on the neck? Ramananda Roy is Vishaka. But now maybe in a other mood? Who knows? You have to go in, you have to dive in with your feelings and see. And he questions Varugamura, thinking him to be his gopi friend. Just as Srimati Radharani inquired from her personal friend Vishaka, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, reading that very verse, began speaking like a madman. My dear friend, where is Krishna? Who is like the moon rising from the ocean of Maharaj Nanda's dynasty? Where is Krishna, his head decorated with a peacock feather? Where is he? Where is Krishna, whose flute produces such a deep sound? Oh, where is Krishna, whose bodily luster is like the luster of the blue intranila jewel? Where is Krishna, who is expert in rasa dancing? Oh, where is he who can save my life? Kindly tell me where to find Krishna, the treasure of my life and the best of my friends. Feeling separation from him, I hereby condemn providence, the shaper of my destiny. So this is the prayer of Radharani, who is spoken here by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The verse is found in Lalita Madhava 3.25 from Srila Rupa Goswami. Text 36 the family of Maharaj Nanda is just like an ocean of milk, wherein Lord Krishna has arisen like the full moon to illuminate the entire universe. The eyes of the residents of Braj are like Chakura birds that continuously drink the nectar of his bodily luster and thus live peacefully. My dear friend, where is Krishna? Kindly let me see him. My heart breaks at not seeing his face even for a moment. Kindly show him to me immediately otherwise I cannot live. The woman of Brindavan are just like lilies growing hot in the sun of lusty desires. But moonlight Krishna makes them all jubilant by bestowing upon them the nectar of his hands. Oh, my dear friend, where is my moon now? Save my life by showing him to me. It, like a rainbow upon a new cloud, Where are those yellow garments shining like lightning? And where is that necklace of pearls that resemble flocks of ducks flying in the sky? The blackish body of Krishna 
triumphs over the new blackish rain cloud. Triumphs over the new blackish rain cloud. If a person's eyes even once capture that beautiful body of Krishna's, it remains always prominent within his heart. Krishna's body resembles the sap of the mango tree, for when it enters the minds of women, it will not come out despite great endeavor. Thus Krishna's extraordinary body is like a thorn of the sea berry tree. So Radharani is longing for Krishna. And if we see it from the point of view of a Manjuri, then we will feel with her what she's speaking about Krishna. We try to help her. We try to pacify her. We try to help her to meet him. Or if this is not possible, then we will sing for her about the glories of Krishna. And we will try to pacify her. You may also look from other directions on it, but this is our view. So we hear that our Swamini is suffering because Krishna has gone. She cannot see him. And she is suffering and she is talking about him like mad. Krishna's bodily luster shines like the Intranila gem and surpasses the luster of the Tamala tree. The luster of his body drives the entire world mad because providence has made it transparent by refining the essence of the mellow of conjugal love and mixing it with moonshine. The deep vibration of Krishna's flute surpasses the thundering of new clouds and attracts the oral reception of the entire world. Thus, the inhabitants of Brindavan rise and pursue that sound, drinking the showering nectar of Krishna's bodily luster like thirsty Chataka birds. How much Radharani is longing for him. Krishna is the reservoir of art and culture and he is the pana oh, what is this panacea? I don't know. That saves my life. O oh, my dear friend, since I live without him, who is the best among my friends, I condemn the duration of my life. I think that Providence has cheated me in many ways. Why does Providence continue the life of one who does not wish to live? This thought arose, anger and lamentation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then read a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that chastises Providence and makes accusation against Krishna. O oh, Providence, you have no mercy. 
you bring embodied souls together through friendship and affection. But before their desires are fulfilled, you separate them. Your activities are like the foolish pranks of children. Providence, you don't know the purpose of loving affairs and therefore you baffle all our endeavors. This is very childish of you. If we could catch you, we would give you such a lesson that you would never again make such arrangements. O oh, cruel providence, you are very unkind, for you bring together in love people who are rarely in touch with each other. Then, after you have made them meet, but before they are fulfilled, you again spread them far apart. O oh, Providence, you are so unkind, you reveal the beautiful face of Krishna and make the mind and eyes greedy. But after they have drunk the nectar for only a moment, you whisk Krishna away to another place. This is a great sin because you thus take away what you have given as charity. O oh, misbehaved providence, if you reply to us, our grower is actually at fault, why are you angry with me? Then I say to you, Providence, you have taken the form of Akrura and have stolen Krishna away. No one else would behave like this. But this is the fault of my own destiny. Why should I needlessly accuse you? There is no intimate relationship between you and me. Krishna, however, is my life and so, it is we who live together and it is he who has become so cruel. He for whom I have left everything in personally killing is personally killing me with his own hands. Krishna has no fear of killing women. Indeed, I am dying for him. But he doesn't even turn back to look at me. Within a moment, he has broken off our loving affairs. So this could be a link that actually Krishna has gone already back. He for whom I have left everything and came here, Radharani, came here with him. She left everything for him, but now he's just going. It was his wish to understand her love.
Text 52. Yet, why should I be angry with Krishna? It is the fault of my own misfortune. The fruit of my sinful activities has ripened. And therefore, Krishna, who has always been dependent on my love, is now indifferent. This means that my misfortune is very strong. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lamented in the mood of separation. Alas, alas, O oh Krishna, where have you gone? Feeling in his heart the ecstatic emotion, emotions of the gopis, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agonized in their words, saying, O Govinda, O Damoda, O Mahadava. Swarup Damoda and Ramananda Roy then devised various means to pacify the Lord. They sang songs of meeting that transformed his heart and made his mind peaceful. So we see this is the seva of manjuris actually, to pacify Radharani's mind when she is in such a situation, almost dying, longing for Krishna. But also the girlfriends sometimes help in different ways. So it belongs on our angle. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lamented in this way, half the night passed. Then Swarup Damura made the Lord lie down in the room known as the Gambira. After the Lord was made to lie down, Ramananda Roy returned home and Swarup Damura and Govinda lay down at the door of the Gambira. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed awake all night chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. His mind overwhelmed by spiritual ecstasy. Here I remember that the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is made for Radharani. made for her and she's chanting all the time completely overwhelmed by spiritual ecstasy Lord Chaitanya chants the whole night feeling separation from Krishna Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so distraught that in great anxiety he stood up and began rubbing his face against the walls of the Gambira. Blood oozed from the many injuries in his mouth, nose and cheeks. But due to his ecstatic emotions, the Lord did not know it. In ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rubbed his face against the walls all night long, making a peculiar sound, gong, gong, which Swarubhdamoda could hear through the door. Lighting a lamp, Swarup Damoda and Govinda entered the room when they saw the Lord's face. Both of them were full of sorrow. 
They brought the Lord to his bed, calmed him, and then asked, Why have you done this to yourself? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I was in such anxiety that I could not stay in the room. I wanted to go out and therefore I wandered about the room looking for the door. Unable to find the door, I kept hitting the four walls with my face. My face was injured and, I, and it bled, but I still could not get out. In this state of madness, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind was unsteady. Whatever he said or did was all symptomatic of madness. Sometimes we hear that Radharani is even more mad when Krishna is not there and she feels even more ecstasy because she feels him more when he is not there bodily. So, if he's not in the presence, Swarup Damada was very anxious, but then he had an idea. The following day, he and the other devotees considered it together. After consulting with one another, they entreated Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to allow Shankara Pandit to lie down in the same room with him. Thus Shankara Pandit lay at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Lord placed his legs upon Shankara's body. Shankara became celebrated by the name the pillow of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was like Vidura as Shukadev Goswami previously described him. Actually, there is a very interesting point about this because Shankara Pandit, I don't remember the name now, but he was actually a wife of Krishna in Not in Vrindavan, it was in some other place, I don't remember, I don't remember the name. But anyway, this person is getting now the chance from, Ch from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to get the full mercy of Radharani's lotus feet. Because, you know, even the wives from Krishna who are living with him in palaces, they pray that they may get the mercy of, Ch of Radharani's lotus feet. So now, here we can see, yes, one person gets the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or from Radharani in that form. What actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is distributing? The highest selfless love. So what he will give this person? Shankara massaged the legs of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but while massaging, he would fall asleep and thus lie down. He would lie asleep without a covering on his body, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would get up and wrap him with his own quilt.
If you go in this meditation, you will understand what it means, actually. Shankara Pandit would always fall asleep, but he would quickly awaken, sit up and, and again begin massaging the legs of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this way, he would stay awake the entire night. Out of fear of Shankara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could neither leave his room nor rub his lotus-like face against the walls. This pastime of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been described very nicely by Raghunadas Goswami in his book known as Goranga Stava Kalpa Vriksha. Because of separation from his many friends in Vrindavan, who were like his own life, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke like a madman. His intelligence was transformed. Day and night he rubbed his moon-like face against the walls and blood flowed from his injuries. May that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rise in my heart and make me mad with love. Emata Mahaprabhu Ratri Divase Prema Sindhu Makna Rahe Ghabhudu Bhebhase Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this way stayed immersed day and night in an ocean of ecstatic love for Krishna. Sometimes he was submerged and sometimes he floated. So we can see that actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving the chance to everyone who was with him or is with him because he's still giving this chance again and again to come into Manjari Bhav, to come in the highest form of selfless love. And he is distributing it. And he doesn't consider the position of the person he is giving it to it. He doesn't consider. If you want or not, you will get it. Depends on you if you catch it. One full moon night in the month of Vaishaka, up April to May, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to a garden. The Lord, along with his devotees, entered one of the nicest gardens called Jagannadwalaba. The garden were fully bluesome trees and creepers, exactly like those in Vrindavan. Bumblebees and birds like the Shukashari and Pika talked with one another. A mild breeze was blowing, carrying the fragrance of aromatic flowers, of aromatic flowers. The breeze had become a guru and was teaching all the trees and creepers how to dance. Brightly illuminated by the full moon, the trees and creepers glittered in the light. The six seasons, especially spring, seemed present there. Seeing the garden, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the supreme personality of Godhead, was very happy.
In this atmosphere, the Lord has his associates sing a verse from the Gita Govinda, beginning with the words Lalita Lavangalata, as he danced and wandered about with them. As he thus wandered around every tree and creeper, he came beneath an Ashoka tree and suddenly saw Lord Krishna. When he saw Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began running very swiftly. But Krishna smiled and disappeared. Having first gotten Krishna and then having lost him again, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fell to the ground unconscious. The entire garden was filled with the scent of Lord Sri Krishna's transcendental body. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smelled it, he fell unconscious at once. The scent of Krishna's body, however, incessantly entered his nostrils and the Lord became mad to relish it. Krishna Ganda Lukta Radha Sakire Ye Kahila Se Shloka Pati Prabhu Arta Karila Srimati Ratarani expressed to her gopi friends how she hankers for the transcendental sin of Krishna's body. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited that same verse and made its meaning clear. This is the verse from Govinda Lilamrita 8.6. The scent of Krishna's transcendental body surpasses the aroma of musk and attracts the minds of all women. The eight lotus-like parts of his body distribute the fragrance of lotuses mixed with that of camphor. His body is anointed with ar aromatic substances like musk, camphor, sandalwood and aguru. Oh my dear friend! That personality of Godhead, also known as the Enchanter of Cupid, always increases the desire of my nostrils. And this is what Gurudev pointed out again and again. We can never understand books like Ovindali Lamrita without the guidance of a person who knows from which side you have to feel or see it actually, then you will be lost. You have to be fixed in your bath to understand. Otherwise, you will be attracted by this blue boy and then no mandri bath possible anymore. Then you will be stuck in gopi bath. Or in others. <laughs> or a mixture. <laughs> Which 
makes even worse. The scent of Krishna's body surpasses the fragrance of musk and the bluish lotus flower. So when we hear all this description, at least for me, it's like, I always think, yeah, okay. But Radharani? <laughs> yeah, okay. You may attract Radharani, the gopis, but what are you without her? What are you without her fragrance? How to bring the fragrance of Radharani in the nostrils of Krishna? So that he comes swiftly to our Swamini. Sakhi hi Krishna kanda chakat mataya Narirana sate pashe sarvakala tahan vaishe Krishna pasha dari lana yaya My dear friend, the scent of Krishna's body enchants the entire world. But the scent of Radha's body enchants even Krishna. No, it's not written here, sorry. It especially enters the nostrils of woman and remains seated there. Thus, it captures them and forcibly brings them to Krishna. Krishna's eyes navel and face, hands and feet are like eight lotus flowers on his body. From those eight lotuses emanates a fragrance like a mixture of camphor and lotus. That is the scent associated with his body. When sandalwood pulp with aguru, kunkuma and musk is mixed with camphor and spread on Krishna's body, it combines with Krishna's own original bodily perfume and seems to cover it. So Prabhupada is writing in the purport that these substances, this means the scent of all these substances mixed with the previous scent of Krishna's body steals away the mind of Cupid. But we know who steals the mind of transcendental Cupid. After all, this is why this whole scenery actually is happening. Text number 96. The scent of Krishna's transcendental body is so attractive that it enchants the bodies and minds of all women. It bewilders their nostrils, loosens their belts and hair, and makes them mad women. All the women of the world come under its influence and therefore the scent of Krishna's body is like a blunderer. Falling completely under his influence, the nostrils yearn for it continuously, although sometimes they obtain it and sometimes not. 
when they do, they drink. Uh, when they do, they drink their fill. True, they still want more and more. But if they don't, out of thirst, they die. I just remembered when Tulsi Mandri is What do you say? Uh, waving the whisk, giving wind, cooling wind, in such a way that Radharani's scent is going into Krishna's nostril, and how unsteady he is in this moment. The dramatic actor Madan Mohan has opened a shop of scents that attract the women of the world to be his customers. He delivers the scents freely, but they make the women all so blind they cannot find the path returning home. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his mind, thus stolen by that scent, ran here and there like a bumblebee. He ran to the trees and plants, hoping that Lord Krishna would appear. But instead, he found only the scent of Krishna's body. Both Svarubhyamuda and Ramananda Roy sang to the Lord who danced and enjoyed happiness until the morning arrived. Then they devised a plan to revive the Lord to external consciousness. So we see that they serve the whole night very personally, like mandaris, singing about Krishna, cooling Radharani down, giving her through the through the name, through the texts, giving her peace. that she feels, yes, I'm together with my Krishna. The whole night, it's like the seva in the kunj. Text 101. Thus I, Krishna Das, the servant of Srila Rupa Goswami, have sung of four divisions of the Lord's pastimes in this chapter. The Lord's devotion to his mother, his words of madness, his rubbing his face against the walls at night, and his dancing at the appearance of Lord Krishna's fragrance. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says that he has been able to describe these four pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the blessings of Srila Rupa Goswami. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami was not actually a direct disciple of Srila Rupa Goswami, 
But he followed the instructions given by Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu. He therefore acted according to the directions of Rupa Goswami and prayed in every chapter for his mercy. This is a very interesting point for us also. It's a hint how to get the mercy of these great souls to always pray to them. Always, always stay in acquaintance. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus returned to consciousness. He then bathed and went to, sh to see Lord Jagannath. The pastimes of Lord Krishna un are uncommonly full of transcendental potency. It is a characteristic of such pastimes that they do not fall within the jurisdiction of experimental logic and arguments. So we can understand, we, we can never get it just by knowledge. When the transcendental love of Krishna awakens in one's heart, even a learned scholar cannot comprehend one's activities. The activities and symptoms of that exalted personality in whose heart love of Godhead has awakened cannot be understood even by the most learned scholar. The activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are undoubtedly uncommon, especially his talking like a madman. Therefore, one who hears of these pastimes should not put forward mundane arguments. He should simply hear the pastimes with full faith. The evidence of the truth of these talks is found in Srimad Bhagavat. There, in the section of the tenth canto, known as the Brahmamara Gita, the Brahmara Gita, the song to the bumblebee, Srimati Radharani speaks insanely in ecstatic love for Krishna. So, another purport. It's quite long, very, very long. So it's telling about the talks of Srimati Radharani in ecstatic love for Krishna with the bumblebee. Does anyone want to share some feelings or help me a little bit or some questions or whatever? Maybe some command from Jainana Maharaj or Gurudev is Gurudev here actually? I don't know. Do he has his VLAN connection now?
Kurudev is logged on, it seems, but he was falling out one or two times, I saw. Radev, we're here, but we're just trying. We, our Wi-Fi was off and on, and then now it's back, and uh, yeah. Rade. Rade, Rade. Rade. Rade, Rade, Gurudev. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Everything fine? Everything. Until half an hour, what? Uh, <laughs> sometime I listen, sometime. Disturbance was there. So what are you what what are you uh, feeling about this uh, chapter nineteen? Good, good, very nice. It's very nice. When you read it's very sweet. Oh just on the Ah yes, yes. You want to give us some aspects, Gurudev? Because this day I cannot listen full. So sometime I listen. I was not very much. And disturbance was there in my life. Uh. Next time I will be very serious. We just connected again, just one, two minutes ago. That's no problem. It just would be more sweet to have some nectar words from you also. But Maybe some other person who listened more and can say he something. About it. Yeah, How please. He has a feeling Mahaprabhu is covering, who is never covering, he covers and he is living in the feeling. He is scratching his face and this, and he was in the feeling of Radha Bhav. That was. In the Govind Lilamrita, you are explaining that. And you very nicely explained that. I cannot, in between, it's cutting and adding that. So that way. That time I was there. So I want to listen. I want to listen to you. I always like to listen. This is my Go on. There is a bow and philosophy also behind Siddhanta with that philosophy. Yes. Philosophy. So we have Hello. a perp purport from from Srila Prabhupada, we can read this. Yeah. When Uddhava arrived from Mathura, carrying a message for the gopis, the gopis began talking about Krishna and crying. Then one important gopi saw a bumblebee and began speaking to it like someone mad, thinking that the bee was a messenger of Uddhava's or was someone very dear to him and Krishna. The verses are as follows, Bhagavad Gita 10.47.12-21. My dear bumblebee, you are a very cunning friend of Uddhava and Krishna. You are very expert in touching people's feet. 
But I am not going to be missled by this. You appear to have sat on the breasts of one of Krishna's friends, for I see that you have kumkuma dust on your mustache. Krishna is now engaged in flattering all his young girl friends in Mathura. Therefore, now that he can be called a friend of the residents of Mathura, he does not need the help of the residents of Brindavan. Wow. He has no reason to satisfy us gopis. Since you are the messenger of such a person as he, what is the use of your presence here? Certainly Krishna would be ashamed of your presence in this assembly. How has Krishna offended the gopis so that they want to reject him from their minds? The answer is given as follows. Krishna no longer gives us the enchanting nectar of his lips. Instead, he now gives that nectar to the woman of Mathura. Krishna directly attracts our minds, yet he resembles a bumblebee like you because he gives up the association of a beautiful flower and goes to a flower that is inferior. That is the way Krishna has treated us. I do not know why the goddess of fortune continues to serve his lotus feet instead of leaving them aside. Apparently, she believes in Krishna's false words. We gopis, however, are not unintelligent like Lakshmi. After hearing the bumblebee's sweet songs and recognizing that the bee was singing about Krishna for her satisfaction, the gopi replied, Dear bumblebee, Lord Krishna has no residence here, but we know him as Yadupati, the king of the Yadu dynasty. We know him very well, and therefore we are not interested in hearing any more songs about him. It would be better for you to go sing to those who are now very dear to Krishna. Those women of Mathura have now achieved the opportunity to, to be embraced by him. They are his beloveds now, and therefore he has relieved the burning in their breasts. If you go there, and sing your songs for those fortunate women, they will be very pleased and they will honor you. O collector of honey, Krishna must be very sorry not to see us gopis. Surely he is afflicted by memories of our pastimes. Therefore, 
he has sent you as a messenger to satisfy us? Do not speak to us. All the women in the three worlds were dead as inevitable. The heavenly, middle and lower planets are very easily available to Krishna because his curved eyebrows are so attractive. Moreover, he is always served very faithfully by the goddess of fortune. In comparison with her, we are most insignificant. Indeed, we are nothing. Yet, although he is very cunning, Krishna is also very charitable. You may inform him that he is praised for his kindness to unfortunate persons and that he is therefore known as Uttama Shloka, one who is praised by chosen words and verses. You are bussing at my feet just to be forgiven for your past offenses. Kindly go from my feet. I know that Mukunda has taught you to speak very sweet, flattering words like this and to act as his messenger. These are certainly clever tricks, my dear Bumblebee, but I can understand them. This is Krishna's offense. Do not tell Krishna what I have said, although I know that you are very envious. We gopis have given up our husbands, our sons and all the religious principles that promise better birds. And now we have no other business than serving Krishna. Yet. Krishna, by controlling his mind, has easily forgotten us. Therefore, don't speak of him anymore. Let us forget our relationship. When we remember the past <coughs> words of Krishna, my dear Bumblebee, we are very afraid of him. In his incarnation as Lord Ramchandra, he acted just like a hunter and unjustly killed his friend Vali. Lusty Shopanaka uh, came to satisfy Ramchandra's desires, but he was so attached to Sita Devi that he cut off Shurpanaka's nose. In his incarnation as Vamanadev, he plundered Bali Maharaj and took all his possessions, cheating him on the pretext of accepting worship from him. Vamanadev caught Bali Maharaj exactly as one catches a crow. My dear Bumblebee, it is not very good to make friends with such a person. I know. I know that once one begins to talk about Krishna, it is very difficult to stop. And I admit that I have insufficient strengths to give up talking about him. Topics about Krishna are so powerful that they destroy the four religious principles – religion, economic development, sense gratification 
and liberation. Anyone who drinks even a small drop of Krishna Kata through oral reception is freed from all material attachment and envy. Like a bird with no means of subsistence, such a person becomes a mendicant and lives by begging. Ordinary household affairs become miserable for him and without attachment he suddenly gives up everything. Although such, such renunciation is quite suitable, because I am a woman, I am unable to adopt it. Oh, my dear messenger, I am just like a foolish bird that hears the sweet songs of a hunter, believes in them due to simplicity and is then pierced in the heart and made to suffer all kinds of miseries. Because we believed in Krishna's words, we have suffered great pain. Indeed, the touch of Krishna's nails has endured our faces. He has caused us so much pain. Therefore, you should, go, you should give up topics concerning him and talk about something else. After hearing all these statements from Srimati Radhika, the bumblebee left and then returned. After some pause, the gopi said, You are Krishna's very dear friend, and by his order you have come here again. Therefore, you are worshipable for me. O oh, best of messengers, tell me now, what is your request? What do you want? Krishna cannot give up conjugal love, and therefore I understand that you have to come here to take us to him. But how will you do that? We know many goddesses of fortune now reside at Krishna's chest and they constantly serve Krishna better than we can. Praising the bumblebee for its sobriety, she began to speak in great jubilation. Krishna is now living like a gentleman at the Gurukul in Mathura, forgetting all the gopis of Vrindavan. But does he not remember the sweet house of his father, Nanda Maharaj? We are all naturally his maidservants. Does he not remember us? Does he ever speak about us, or has he forgotten, forgotten us completely? Will he ever forgive us and once again touch us with those hands fragrant with the scent of our Guru? So here ends the conversation with the bumblebee. So these are the mad expressions of Radharani completely in love and completely in meditation about her beloved. Wow. 
text 108. The song of the queens at Dwaraka, which I mentioned at the end of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavat, have a very special meaning. They are not understood, understood even by the most <coughs> learned scholars. Text 109. If one becomes a servant of the servants, wow. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If one becomes a servant of the servants, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, and is favored by them, he can believe in all these discourses. Text 110. Shradhakari Shuna Iha Sunite Mahashuka Kandibe Adyatmikadi Kutakada Dukkha. Just try to hear these topics with faith, for there is great pleasure even in hearing them. That hearing will destroy all miseries pertaining to the body, mind and other living entities. <coughs> wow. and And it will destroy the unhappiness of false arguments as well. So like you say, Gurudev, drink to the ears. Wow. Just try to hear these topics with faith, for there is great pleasure even in hearing them. Yeah. That hearing will destroy all miseries pertaining to the body, mind and other living entities and the unhappiness of false arguments as well. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Nityanudana Sunite Sunite Chudaya Ridha Shravana Chaitanya Charit Amrita is ever increasingly fresh. Continuously hearing it pacifies one's heart and ear. Sri Ruparagunat Pade Yara Asha Chaitanya Charit Amrita Kahe Krishna Das. <laughs> Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy. I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charit Amrita following in their footsteps. So again and again, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is showing us the right way by offering this prayer. Yeah. 
So here ends chapter 19 and the next chapter next time is the Shikshashtaka prayers. And like I said, it begins with the first step and it's going up and up and up and up and up and up. So chapter 19 was actually higher than chapter 18. How it's possible? Chapter 18 was actually in Manjari behalf, very clearly. But actually in chapter 19, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was fully in Radharani's mood, completely in the absence of Krishna, in that mood. Viraha. Viraha. And he was giving the seva, the manjari seva, yeah. to his. Seva to make the service to remove from Viraha to Swami. Yes. So to give this seva of Manjari Bhav is even more high than to be in Manjari Bhav. Diving. And going and diving. Yes. Diving deep. <laughs> How to remove this pain of my son? So in this way we can see that Manjari Bhav is everywhere actually. Just depends on our view. Gurudev is giving us the eyes to see. This now friend of now and not do it. This heart to cannot is part to go in the separation. But Manjari makes Service now, service come for my So, pray will the period. Vira is also Milan. So actually for today uh, we finished chapter 19 so next time we will read chapter 20 to Shikshashtaka prayers. Wow! Which is the culmination of all these lilas. And we will hear how ecstatically Srimad Mahaprabhu is praising the Holy Name, actually. He's giving such a praise to the Holy Name. Only Radharani can give that praise to the Holy Name. Only Name can be... Make union in separate. So we can see that in a Maha Mantra, actually, the solution for Viraha is given because it's made for Radharani and she is in Viraha, she can hear. And also it's for us, because actually this is 
what we should feel with or through the feelings of Radharani. We have to feel that this is service I am doing much for my family to remove his villa. Yes, save her for our Swamini, to pacify her. Name and person is no different. So nice to see you. Little, little voice is coming. I'm very happy to listen. Waiting for this day. Thank you very much for for the mercy of all the Vaishnavas sitting here and please forgive me if I make any mistakes and correct me by the time and see you soon Radhe Radhe